Welcome to my channel YouTube, it's your boy Steven and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you guys my experience of learning how to do a panel swap from start to finish. Um, this is my second one actually doing um, and I made sure to ask my journeyman the next one we had if I could actually do it by myself. So he said yeah, so um, he actually walked me through everything that I needed to do because you know one day I'm going to be out here doing this on my own. So yeah, I just wanted to share that with you guys. Uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up and the subscribe button and let's get into it y'all. Let's go. So today's panel is going to be an old Federal Pacific and we're going to be swapping that out with a new Siemens panel. Uh, one of the first things I learned when doing panels is to make sure that we label in our breakers whether they're 20 amp, 30 amps, single pole, two pole. Um, that's one of the first things my journeyman taught me to do. It's a very important step so you definitely want to take your time when you're doing it because you never want to get your wires mixed up anything like that. So what you guys seeing me do right now, I'm loosening up all of my grounds and my neutrals and I'm going to tie everything up so we can actually take the panel out. Now I've done this before um, but actually having to remove sheetrock and things like that, um, I just haven't done it before. So my journeyman walked me through everything with it, showing me exactly where I needed to cut and things like that. Um, so it was really, really fun to actually be able to do this, you know, to still see my growth, you know, just getting better each and every time. Um, Cause like I said, you know, one day I'm gonna be out here doing this by myself, you know, and I won't have him there to kind of hold my hand through certain things. But once I finish getting the wires disconnected and taped up, basically all we're doing right now is getting the Siemens panel and kind of lining up how we want to place it and once we figure that out the next thing for us to do is kind of cut some of the sheetrock out um, my journeyman basically explained to me that most of the time studs are going to be 16 inches um, but sometimes your panels might not be that size so what you will have is a two by four to kind of help brace it up there and that's kind of what we ran into today and he just kind of showed me exactly how to handle it and how to work through it um, so basically right now all i'm doing is just kind of cutting the sheetrock where the two by four is and we'll end up actually prying that away um, to get our main panel out of the wall so that we can place our new Siemens panel in the wall. Uh, so right now you see me cutting everything off at the top um, just to kind of get a better look at everything and see where it is. But we do have wires up there so I had to be careful to make sure I didn't nick anything like that. And we was able to just pull it out real smooth. Once we took that out, basically we were just kind of trying to clear any extra debris that was behind the panel. Um, and the next thing for us to do was actually to remove the 2x4 that was on the actual side. Um, and once we removed that, basically the next thing was just kind of clear all of the extra sheetrock on the entire square to just to make sure everything was nice and neat and clean and now we got the panel and we're actually just trying to size it and see exactly what we need to do it now being out in the electrical field one thing you know is that every situation is going to be different um, now us having a longer or a bigger panel probably could have helped us but a lot of these wires were really really short so we kind of had to just make it work you know and that's just kind of how it is sometimes out in the field and once we figured out exactly how we wanted to do it um, as you guys can see those bottom wires were really really short um, we already knew we were going to have to splice most of the wires in there but like I said we was going to have to just make it work uh, once we knocked out the holes basically we just kind of feeding everything in there getting it all seated nice and neat and the only thing left I had to do was get my wires in from the bottom which I had a little bit of issue with but I was able to work through it uh, it was a little tight in there so other than that it all went good now the next step we had to do was actually get the panel seated in the wall um, my journeyman actually showed me exactly you know where we needed to screw in each side and that's basically what I'm doing uh, so that was real fun because I hadn't done that before but once we got the panel seated in everything else is basically just left up to me to go ahead and connect everything as you guys see this is exactly what it looks like that hole in the back of the panel will be the nipple that's going to the main panel outside um, this panel right here will no longer be the first means of disconnect so all of my neutrals and my grounds will be separated um, so now everything that I need to do is basically just kind of get everything separated my hots my neutrals and my grounds and as you guys can see these are the wires that I was telling you about um, they are extremely short um, so we will have to splice all of these wires um, it's the same at the bottom um, now I wish we could have had a bigger panel um, but that wasn't in the budget I guess for the customer so this is the one that we will be working with um, and that's how it is in the field man you're gonna run into a lot of situations where you just kind of have to make things work you know, you know uh, I'm gonna definitely do this panel nice and neat um, but definitely you know it could look better if my wires were a lot longer I wanted to be strategic when doing this um, I knew that my panel will be full with me having all of the splices and the wire nuts um, so I wanted to put all of my grounds on the right side and pull out of my neutrals on the left side if you guys remember that hole that we had that's where we will be nippling 
from to get our main wires and I just didn't want to have all of my wires bunched up all together uh, so that's kind of why I separated them like that um, but as you guys see I'm just wiring that and tying my ground wires in that's how I was taught to do my grounds first my neutral second and then do my hot wires last and that's what you guys see me do right now um, it's definitely fun to kind of see the progress that I have made you know since I've started this journey if you guys didn't know I just completed my second year on April 21st uh, so that is a blessing I'm super grateful about it I am moving on to year three you know and uh year three is gonna be a special one man I just I just feel it man I'm just excited about it all uh, I just can't believe you know I'm this far you know from where I started not knowing anything you know I was the greenest of the green and um you know it's just amazing to sit back and just kind of watch my progress and definitely always sharing the ups and downs of what it's actually like to be an electrical apprentice um it's not easy you know it's a lot of hard work a lot of determination it's gonna be a lot of uphill battles that you face uh but if you want it you know you can actually do it man um i really didn't have any experience in doing any of this at all and to look back you know two years later you know i'm actually doing it you know i'm just very very grateful about that and i'm definitely just grateful for all of the support that you guys have shown me throughout this entire journey man i just want to say thank y'all but right now i'm working on the neutrals um as you guys can see that right corner is kind of getting a little tight um but i have to leave that left corner open uh so we can get our main wires in so that's why you see all of those wire nuts um and it's just it's just a little challenging you know i definitely wish it looked a lot better because i know the type of work that i'm actually capable of doing um but all of the situations you know you know they won't be ideal for you so i'm making this one work like i said early in the video and um just trying to move forward with it now i'm getting ready to start splicing some of my hot wires and those will be going on the left hand side and like i shared with you guys early in the video about the importance of making sure that you're labeling your hot wires um, even though I'm extending them, I'm still making sure I'm keeping track exactly which breaker they were supposed to go to, whether it was 20, 30, or 40 amp breaker. Um, and one thing I learned about when you're doing panel swaps, um, sometimes the people before you might connect a wire to the wrong size breaker. Um, I've seen 14 wire on a 30 amp breaker, um, and that's not correct. You know, you would have to change that to a 15 amp breaker. Uh, so whenever you see those mistakes, you want to go ahead and correct them because that's your job as an electrician. And basically, we just want to help prevent any issues for the customer, you know, so they don't have any issues down the line, you know, and it's our job to fix that, you know. Uh, so basically, my journeyman just fed me all of my main wires that we're going to be hooking the panel up with. And as I told you guys early in the video, it would be a little tight. Uh, and as you guys can see, that left side is really, really tight. And I hadn't even hooked up any of my hot wires to my breakers yet. One tip I can tell you guys whenever you guys are doing panel swaps is to try to invest into some good lighting. Uh, I've been using my journeyman's Dewalt light. Uh, and it's been helpful so far. I hadn't had any problems with it. But hopefully in the future, I'm able to invest and get my own. Uh, I'm really not sure what brand I want to get. Uh, I know Milwaukee and Dewalt have some. But if you guys have any suggestions, put some in the comments so I know and I can check them out. Uh, but another thing when working in these panels, man, uh, I was in a garage the whole day, so it was extremely hot. So I would definitely stay hydrated, you know, get your electrolytes, whatever you guys need, and just be careful out there, man. Uh, I know we gotta get the job done, but the main objective is for us to get home to our family. Uh, the only thing left we have to do right now is just to connect our wires to the breakers. Uh, so that's basically what I'm doing. Uh, the customer did say they were gonna fix all of the sheetrock damage, um, so we're good on that end. All in all, man, I'm just grateful for the opportunity you know grateful that i was able to get some more experience doing this um i've worked in panels before but actually start to finish this was my second one doing and to be able to kind of do this one by myself you know to prepare me for the next time when i'm able to do it by myself you know i'm just very very happy about that uh, but yeah man um it just lets you know man that all of the situations are not going to be ideal just work with what you have you know and make the most of it you know control what you can control you know that's how i live my life hopefully you guys enjoyed the video thank you guys as always for all of your support um hopefully the video was informative for you guys if you guys enjoyed it hit the thumbs up and the subscribe button and i just want to take you guys step by step on everything that i did this right here is the finished product uh, i made the most of it i did the best that i could do with all of my splices and everything but hopefully it came out okay to you guys. I'm going to keep taking it one day at a time and keep learning each and every day. Uh, and thank you guys again for all of y'all support, man. And I'll see you guys in the next one. We out.